The Master Keys MK750 is Cooler Master's most premium mechanical gaming keyboard with perky RGB lighting, the distinct illuminated light bar across the front, and a premium braided cable with an actual USB Type-C plug. There's a removable soft magnetic wrist rest, and it's available with a variety of genuine Cherry MX switches, so click the sponsor link in the description for more information. What's up guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for February 2018. Haven't done my monthly builds video for the past couple months, so apologies for that. But at the beginning of every month, I choose a couple computers and I choose the parts to go into those computers and I share those lists with you guys and that's what today's video is all about in order to help you get a better idea of how to part out your own system. I will then go later in the month and actually build the system uh, and if you wanna check out any builds, check out my builds playlist, which I'll link in this video's description where you can actually see me putting some stuff together. Speaking of putting some stuff together. I have actually already built one of the uh, two systems I'm going to be talking about today, so follow-up video will co be coming later this week uh, with a how to build tutorial on this system. And of course I need your feedback as well, so check the video description for a straw poll where you can tell me what builds you want to see in March. There's a few options there. Hopefully prices will be somewhat more reasonable by that time. Who knows though, we've been talking about that for a while. But for today's first build, I have a build that no one should buy. And that is because we're dealing with some really difficult pricing issues in the PC component world right now. Memory is very expensive and graphics cards are very expensive. So I wanna do a throwback actually to about a year ago, January 2017, I did this sensible RGB build with a 7600K and a GTX 1070. And that total system price was $1,236.81, at least according to PC Part Picker at the time. I will be using PC Part Picker for my builds today and links to everything is down in the description by the way. But this was a 7600K base system with a Z270 motherboard and a GTX 1070 one year ago for just under $1,250. So I took that same base list of components, swapped out a couple things to make it a bit more current, and here's where you get my first build for today's video, February 2018, a stupid overpriced PC that nobody should buy. There's only a single upgrade to this system compared to last year's system. That's an 8600K instead of the 7600K, which is a six core processor instead of a four core processor. Still no hyper threading on this one, so six cores and six threads. And at $250, it is a very capable gaming processor, but there's plenty of competition now from Ryzen. And on the Ryzen side, you can get six core 12 thread processors or even eight core 16 thread processors, as well as less expensive motherboards. So this is why I'm less enthused about the 8600K overall. Although, if you're willing to spend the money and your focus is on gaming, it is a very, very good processor for that. Now the CPU cooler is about the same price. The CryoRig H7 is still 35 bucks. That's not too bad at all. The Asus Prime Z370, a solid mid-range $150 motherboard and about $150 is about what you should be spending for a system that's gonna cost overall about this much. The G-Skill Ripjaws 4 series memory kit is currently $186. Free shipping though, uh, if you compare that to one year ago, that same kit was $85. It has literally gone up 100 freaking dollars since last year, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I do not recommend buying this memory or indeed any memory that's ridiculously overpriced unless you absolutely have to. And I still went with a 480 gig SSD. I used uh, PC Part Picker's parametric filter option here just to choose a 480 to 512 gig SSD and sort it by price. And that's what we're coming up with, about 125 to $135 for a reasonable 480 gig SSD. And that actually is also about the same price. It was $120 for the 480 gig last year. Now our case is the Fantex Eclipse P400, very solid case, $60. That's actually $10 less than it was last year. And then finally, of course, we have the GTX 1070 itself. Again, here I've used a parametric filter in order to just choose GTX 1070s and sort them by price. And according to PC Part Picker, you can get one for $620 right now. However, those are all lies, damned lies. And if we looked at the actual page over here, we see it's supposed to be on sale for $550 to $600. This is supposed to cost about $400 again, by the way. So we're looking at prices that are two to $300 over what they should be. But even the outlet PC listing here is out of stock. And um, if we go over to Newegg, it's out of stock. And I just wanted to check, like, are there any 1070s that you can actually buy? So over on Newegg, if we're um, sorting by price and looking just at 1070, it does look like you've got a, a $700 1070 in stock or a $750 1070 in stock. And this is all just stupid and lame and nobody should buy them for these prices. 
Uh, so so don't 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 buy any of this stuff, really. <laughs> so yeah, this is a stupid overpriced PC. Nobody should buy it. I'm gonna can like it. It puts me in a strange position being a person who makes YouTube videos about building computers and recommending you guys what parts to buy to just be saying like don't buy any of this stuff until we have reasonable graphics cards and memory prices. But that's that's really where I'm at right now. Don't spend money on a uh, computer right now. That's my advice. Uh, but if you have to, if you really need to, or if you're just really excited, if you were like saving up money all last year to build an entry level gaming PC and you gotta get off the ground somehow, you're tired of console gaming or you've, you've got a game you really wanna play, here is what I would recommend you purchase. And this is a sub $500 gaming PC and this is using the new Ryzen 3 2200G that just launched, which is an APU, which includes both the CPU and the graphics processor in the same chip. This is uh, $99 for the 2200G, and yes, it is not a discrete graphics card. No, it is not gonna perform equivalently to like a 1050 or a 1050 Ti or anything above that, but it does perfectly adequate 1080p gaming, especially if you're willing to play on medium or low settings, depending on the game, of course, and you can check out my video where I already did a review with some benchmarks on that if you wanna see some actual performance numbers. Now, apart from the 2200G, which is $100, we have a $100 motherboard, we have a uh, just over $100 memory kit and I'm torn about this but you got to have memory for your uh, process for your computer to work we have a 240 gig SSD a little $50 thermal take case and a Corsair 550 watt power supply all together $470 is the price that you would pay right now assuming of course that everything is in stock I do want to point out if you're looking at the Ryzen 3 2200G and you're using my uh, links their affiliate links down in the description just so you know double check and make sure that you're actually buying from Amazon right now Amazon has it for $99 but they're temporarily out of stock you I can't see that. Uh, temporarily out of stock. So uh, check on the auto notify options there to make sure you're not paying an extra 20 or $30 for your APU too, because we're, we're all about not overpaying for stuff uh, this time of year. Now the motherboard that I've chosen is the AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi uh, from Gigabyte. It is the motherboard that I already had that I used for my testing. It's about $100 and it's mini ITX. So this is a mini ITX system. Now, once you've chosen your motherboard, Go over to your motherboard's uh, website. This is the Gigabyte support page, and uh, they'll have downloads and stuff for drivers. Go over to the support list, and then they'll usually have memory support lists that you can pull up here. So I downloaded that, it is a PDF, and it's a little bit difficult to read, but this basically just lists all of the memory kits that Gigabyte has directly tested with this motherboard and verified to work, because you want faster memory uh, with Ryzen, it improves the performance of the CPU, and since you're using an integrated GPU, you want decently fast memory for that as well. So all I really did here was, uh, I skipped the 3200 uh, megahertz speed memory, that, that's all a little bit more expensive. DDR4-3000 is a good kit to run with. Over here, you, you can tell you that they verified the, that the XMP settings have been plugged in and worked. So all you wanna do is highlight the actual SKU, the, the model part number for each one, and uh, depending on your browser or whatever, you can just search for Google or whatever, and it should hopefully pull up um, a listing for that based on the actual model number and then maybe you can pull that up over on Amazon. Now this is Amazon Canada for some weird reason. I don't know why it did that. Um, but the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit is still a solid kit as long as you get the right SKU. There's also some team options here. So this is the one that I actually chose uh, in the listing down in the parts list down below. It's an eight gig kit, two by four gigs. And I opted to go with two four gig sticks versus a single eight gig stick, uh, largely based on the video that uh, Brian from Tech uh, Yes City posted earlier today. And he actually compared dual channel versus single channel mode. I'll link this video in the description as well. Uh, but with the 2200G in dual channel mode, having two sticks of memory versus a single eight gig stick was a pretty big difference in your integration of GPU's performance. So for that reason, if you're going the budget route here, get the two by four gig uh, kit rather than a single eight gig kit. And that'll make sure that you get the most out of the memory that you choose and the most out of your iGPU. Now, of course, that list goes on. And if you've cho chosen a different motherboard, you might have a different list. Uh, if you go with the Asus motherboard, for example, they usually have a lot of different types of memory listed there. But you can go down that list and just find the memory that uh, you know, matches your build, if that's what you're looking for, or just has the best price or the best kind of combination 
combination of price and performance. And you can get a 16 gig kit, two by eight gigs, uh, which is a nice step up. A Data has their XPG Gamix D10 kit, which is compatible. And there's a, a few different varieties of that uh, DDR4 3000 speed. So that's another option there. A Data also has XPG Spectrix D40, which is on the list. And that's, uh, that's RGB. That's got RGB lighting on it if you're into that. And that's $190. So you do have some options. Again, all of this DDR4 memory is still really overpriced if you compare it to about a year ago. Hopefully that will continue to come down. But whereas with this build you can get by without a graphics card, you do still need system memory. Other than that though, I've got the SanDisk 240 gig SSD for 70 bucks. Then for the case, I actually went over to Fry's because I didn't have a mini ITX case on hand here that I could just build in. And uh, Thermaltake Core V1 here was 50 bucks and also like the only mini ITX case that they had on hand there at Fry's. So that's what I went with there. And that is my build for about $470. Right now you can actually get yourself a nice entry level gaming PC. And the beautiful thing about this is that if graphics card prices do come down, you can drop a graphics card in here. It's got a full PCI Express by 16 slot and a decent amount of space in there for most reasonably sized graphics cards too. So you've got an upgrade path available for you. Not to mention that the CPU could be upgraded too. If you uh, switch to a discrete graphics card, you could go with like an 1800X or something like that in the future. But anyway, guys, again, all the links to everything I've talked about today is down in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you wanna hit the thumbs up button on your way out, it is very, very much appreciated. Again, I have a how to build a PC tutorial for this system coming out too in just a couple days. So subscribe as well if you're not already. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.